Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to CEA in this 2020 season. We're going to be bringing it in on Auburn Orange and UTSA on their A-team. I'm excited for this one. It's been a while since I've been around, and I'm actually being able to walk in here and watch these two teams duke it out on two incredible maps tonight. What is your uh, thought process on these two teams? Do they match up? Which team has a little bit of a competitive edge on what map? Oh, I'm not really sure. Looking at the stats so far, UTSA has some pretty decent players, decent KDs, decent win rates, but ton kind of looking like the top fragger for Texas Antonio side. 
But Auburn, kind of more of a well-rounded team, kind of all uh, sitting around the plat three area. Tonight, we will be starting on Oregon, which is Auburn's pick, and then eventually going to Villa, Villa which is San Antonio's uh, ten. Oh my goodness, uh, it's already a great start. Anyways, Oregon tends to be more... I, I don't know, Oregon's still kind of a newer map in the competitive setting, but I, I want to say Oregon tends to revolve more uh, like 50-50 between fragging and team. So Auburn might have a little bit of the leg up on Oregon just because they kind of seem like more of a solid team, where San Antonio just uh, seems to be more just like a, a frag heavy. You don't get a few really good entry fraggers, but... I, I'm not sure. I haven't really watched these two teams play before. I'd be interested to see where this is going to go. Yeah, I, I, I actually really much agree with you on that one. Oregon seems to have a very good balance between the requirement of fragging out and a strategy behind it, because especially down in that basement, although there are m- multiple new entrances to get down there, if you get caught behind that kill box and you can't move your way through either the wall into sight or the kill box itself and push those defenders out, you are in a lot of trouble, and it is a massive slog that has all the advantage on the defender's side with all the different corners and the different angles that they can hold. However, again, on the other side of things, if the defenders fail to counter the push on the attackers, it just becomes almost like a massacre in some cases, and they will get absolutely fragged from behind as they push through. So, again, we're going to have to see what happens here, and here comes the match as we're getting ourselves started off round one on Oregon. It is kind of crazy how much of that basement defense revolves around holding construction. Uh, it's it's kind of crazy to see. I've been watching quite a bit of Pro League recently just because it's, you know, I'm, I'm just in classes. Who wants to pay attention to classes? I'll throw the game on and yeah, whoops. But it's crazy how many of the rounds, how many of the round wins correlate to being able to hold on to construction. If defense can keep a hold of construction, the majority of the times they end up winning the round. Of course, there's a few oddball cases where they hold on to it and still lose. But it's, it's kind of crazy how much of a, a correlation, even causation, there is. But anyways, we're going to be getting right into the map bands. So, uh, I believe that is Texas starting us off with the Thatcher ban. Um, yeah, kind of pretty typical. Not typical, though. Auburn getting rid of the, the Zofia. That's an operator you don't see banned very much. Um, talking about that construction hold, Zofia is a really interesting ban for this because that's a lot of explosive utility off the board that the attack is no longer going to have to try to clear construction out yeah on top of that too if this is going to allow uh the use of either Wilmai or jaeger to a almost superficial and above effect with that much utility pulled off the board those ads's and those magnets will be able to pull a lot more of crucial utility out of the way that they won't necessarily have the ability to burn off the last two being Mira and Clash being pulled off the board. No one loves the alternative Mr. Clean. And, of course, Mira can frag out in any way possible, especially with those mirrors up, using the little holes to throw the C4 over top and do some serious damage and just be able to sit relatively in the backside behind those bunkers. Have we'll to see what the selections are for both teams as it looks like Texas has got themselves ready to go with Mute, my, well, my Malusi, Smoke, and Jagger. Now it makes a little more sense taking Zofia off the board. Now they got those Malusis on. It's going to be a little bit tougher to take those uh, Banshees off the wall. Yeah, the Cali pick being shown from Auburn here definitely is the right move. Now that Zofia has gone off the board, Cali does have three lances at her disposal that can get rid of pretty much anything. Well, I say pretty much that can that can get rid of anything that an Ash Charge or a Zofia impact grenade could get rid of. On top of that, Dynamite bringing the Ace can also get rid of some of that utility as long as it's placed on a soft surface. He can use his Salmas to try to breach that, but if it's placed on like a brick wall per se, Salma won't actually destroy and the utility will stay up. That's where the Cali and the Ash come in. Uh, but regardless, uh, I see picking, I believe that was a six pick onto the IQ, definitely is a, is a, is a very smart idea here. Um, considering we have the Wamai, the Jaeger, the Malusi, the Mute, the Smoke, there's so much gadgetry on the board from UTSA. And yeah, they have uh, Auburn's bringing a Cali, but she can only really clear gadgetry that's close to any like wall or any surface. Whereas IQ can go below, and most of the floor underneath this top floor here is soft. She can just shoot through it and take it off the board, really without much risk as long as 
Texas doesn't open up that kid's bedroom hat. Five seconds left. Yeah, like, uh, it's going to be interesting to see on this side here, at least as far as I've seen. If you focus too much on pushing from only one way, you're going to get bottlenecked and pulled apart. And we're going to have to watch and see how Auburn decides to push forward through this. If they're going to go from multiple perspectives, maybe through Attic, try to get a little bit of a different approach because a lot of people use that rotate into kids from Attic as a way to move around in case they're coming up the main stairwell. But here, as the round has now started and the attack seems to be moving in at a more methodical pace than previously anticipated as no. the drones are being used at a crazy pace at the moment. Crazy pace, but did they even spot Ton who's holding just on that split door? I don't think they did. And no, Nomad's gonna take the peek. Unfortunately, Ton is gonna miss her head just barely. And it looks like he's probably gonna try to back off that. Definitely the right call. Now that they know he's there, his position is up. He has now could get flanked and cut off. He's instead gonna rotate out of there. Yeah, Dynamite moving in from Big Tower, but Ton is already gone. Kind of a big missed opportunity from Ton there. The drones went into split, but went through the right door. And I don't think they even saw him holding that left side. And unfortunately, he just missed the head of Peep on the Nomad. Getting rid of those air jabs so, so early on would be huge. But this is Attackers round one. Everyone's still probably warming up. And Ton, not very happy with himself, is going to be sneaking it back up through Zulu. And Weezy is instead going to find it. That's the IQ gone. Again, that's a lot of their utility reach gone a lot of that utility from the defense is going to stay where it is now unless Cali can get her hands on it more damage being done to Pete prob probably from ton from below but not quite enough to put her down just yet yeah honestly he's gonna be looking to capitalize and bring himself back after that uh, missed opportunity like you said they didn't see him he was able to try and get a few rounds off but unfortunately the, the kill didn't come through and it looked like peak uh yeah it was peep there taking a little bit uh, less damage than he was able to deliver out on Ton. Ton's going to be looking to uh, rectify the situation as it looks like he's going to be creeping up behind him all stealth like he's a ninja from below and Keys gets dropped on the floor, ladies and gentlemen. His keys are now lost and Ton is moving around to the backside going for another quick rotate. Holy smokes, this is going to be interesting to see if they can't pull Ton off the board quickly. He is going to cause a thorn in their side as time is now ticking down. All right, I need someone from chat to keep track of how many name puns spades end up using tonight. That's one, by the way. We're starting off strong. Uh, someone just keep track of that for me. But 25 seconds left in the round. Smoke toxic babes coming out onto the big window. It looks like they're in that big window there. Auburn trying to get some sort of position to get the diffuser down. No, I'm totally turned around. They're in from Trophy. They're trying to push this singular door. Nash Recharge's going to go off and remove that far wire, but they have to push through a shield as Pete finds one, but the refrag quickly comes out. The BZ followed up by Nexon. Digital, though, with a quick response on the BZ. It's not on just a Dynamite who finds one, but he has one second left, and the Diffuser is in his hands. But, yeah, not enough time. Again, those Malusis really coming into play, delaying those attackers, not letting them quite get to sight. Unfortunately, Auburn just not quite managing their time effectively enough to push site at the end there. I think uh, with Ton sticking a little bit of a thorn in their side, even though he wasn't able to capitalize on that first kill, really made them sweat about what was coming from behind, and they wasted way too much time getting themselves oh, yeah. ready for that push. 100%. Um, and on top of that, too, again, like I said earlier, they bottlenecked themselves by going through one way, and they were ready for it. Uh, Texas just held every possible angle and what an absolutely well uh, played defense in total. There was nothing really much going on uh, that they couldn't handle. They could, they were doing some really good refrags. Things were going around just everything their way. And again, at the end of it there, boom, did not go the dynamite at the end of that round. Yeah, I think another big reason that Auburn had such a hard time attacking was that the defense actually had some vertical holes set up in Kitchen. Uh, we saw a quick glimpse of that, I believe, from BZ during prep phase last round. Uh, we didn't quite get to see it, but that's how IC was picked off so early on. It was actually through those vertical holes. And that IQ being taken off, well, they have Jaeger, Wamai, Malusi. That's so much utility denial that now is the only way to get rid of it is to drain it. And the loadout being brought by the attackers really just doesn't have that drain potential, right? There's three flashes on the board from Ash, but that's really it. Yeah, you could throw some smokes away, but two smokes is, I don't know, that's their valuable utility that you want to hold on to. And Texas knows that. They're still going with this sort of utility drain meta here. 
bringing the line, the Jaeger, the Goyo as well. Um, Cade with those Electro Claws will mean that Callie is going to have to use at least one, maybe even two of her lances on a reinforcement instead of those shields. So Tex is really smart getting rid of that Wamai. They definitely know what they're doing. Yeah, they're going to have to be really, really careful on this push for Auburn. Oh, if, oh well, we'll just see the, the double stacking their uh, ADSs up. That's going to be burning about six things all on its own. We'll have to see how they decide to deal with that problem. And again, most of them seem to be committing, at least from the looks of it, towards that construction and kill box side. Uh, have to see how they're able to deal with this, because at the moment, it's uh, looking like a, a rock in a hard place push, and it doesn't matter. His next is getting shot in the toesies. Good thing it was just a pinky toe, because that was... That could have done a lot of damage if he got hit straight on. It looks like uh, Keys is looking for that perfect shot to take out the, the cankles, if you will, from that Goyo. But uh, he's still bringing that burning sensation. We'll have to see what the rest of Auburn's doing up top. As it looks like uh, UTSA is more condensed down in the basement. Not necessarily a turtle, but they do have more control on the site, more bodies on site which is going to cause a massive slot. You do see on the other side here, Auburn, their Thatcher moving down that backside. It's uh, <laughs> it's it's going to be pretty tough. Double Vulcan set up here from next. He's holding down this fortress. I, I don't know how I feel about this. I don't know if one detonation would cause the other one to go off, but there is an ADS in front of him if he needs it. But Keys with a beautiful headshot with that sniper rifle. We'll take Nexon and remove him from his castle there and also the down onto the smoke. Definitely teaching uh, Texas here not to peek at Cali. It's never a great idea. That one shot down is never great. But Dynamite with a quick two-piece coming down from, I want to say that was, no, that was from construction as well, opening that site wall into B. Auburn now has site control, but Zira here holding the cross from Freezer will find keys. Taking that Cali off the board. Digital with a quick response taking off Zero. So it's not on just to the Kate who doesn't hear Ash pushing through main hall here. And it's going to be Auburn to take this round out. Definitely a beautiful split push coming out, pressuring every single part of the map. And San Antonio really just was not ready for it. No, they were not. And again, they were able to capitalize on taking from multiple perspective. And then with that pushed, boo, pushed. Uh, some pressure onto the Goyo player playing behind that fire ass fortress on the backside. And then Cali Keys was able to sit down and take him out, pull him out of the equation, opening up the column area for that push to come down. And then after that, everything just seemed to collapse on itself. Smoke coming in, trying to put, um, what's it called? Uh, peak from that main doorway from site over towards Killbox being also dropped by Keys. It just, again, like you said, they, they punished them for the peaks this time. And I think. There was a little bit of overconfidence that came out in that round. Uh, we're just going to have to see how it goes going forward here. But, yeah, both teams showing the have the ability to win. Who will capitalize on what side? We're going to have to keep watching this one. Yeah, peep sixing off of them. Nomad in favor of the Jackal. Kind of interesting. Uh, I mean, Nomad really isn't super necessary for this site. I mean, we just saw San Antonio defend it. Auburn knows that they don't really go for flanks. But also, they don't really roam. So I'm kind of interested why the Jackal's coming out. It could be Peep is just very confident with his primary weapon, and rightfully so. Both the Jackal's primaries are quite the beasts. Plus the smokes and the gadgets just to kind of move and shake the defense up is never a bad thing. But Auburn probably going to be trying another kind of split push here. It's going to be down to Texas to try to pick off... Now, those one or two people pushing from the back because they're pushing all alone they could find them get the early pick and then there's no one there to refrag it texas again playing this rotate into construction with a shield i believe there's a couple ads's on that shield it's going to be ton who's actually going to try a little bit of a roam this round so peep rightfully so i'm bringing the jackal but he's going to come up across vigil or not vigil digital first and yeah he's going to remain vigil, uh, digital as he wipes ton off the board very early on not even 30 seconds into the round not even a drone to accompany digital really nice early opening pick yeah that was uh that was just a case of luck he was crouched and i think ton was expecting someone to be standing up with the push and here we go as we see those ads is doing absolute work on the utility trying to push out that shield as their smoke player playing as bz holding it he's going to be a little bit more 
pushing up here as he gets the first kill on Dynamite, removing his wick. There's no thing explosion about that anymore. As Key's now backing off, holding that backside uh, angle, trying to make sure someone comes in after him, maybe afterwards. But again, now they're going to have to reconsider what they're going to do for this push, as they did take ton off the table, but now Dynamite's down, and they've lost Ace on their hard breach. I see back on these back tower stairs. Might be able to make some sort of a push here. He does have the barb in front of him he has to worry about, and at least one shield on the pillars, as well as Nexon on the mozzie, holding close to this construction door. But this might be the push that Auburn needs here. They need some sort of presence to try to get through construction. And it looks like they've completely just backed out. BZ being quite scary, holding that down with a shotgun and an SMG 11 at his disposal. They're just going to back out and try to push a different angle. But where are they? Digital and Peep going down main. This might be it. Digital's in sight completely. Sees the Wamai who just completely misses him. And he's going to have to look for another one. But now it's going to be easy money who finds the easy kill onto Digital. And now it's on to the rest of his teammates. They weren't there pushing with him to try to back it up. That would have been a beautiful push if they were there. But Icy finally pulls through and finds the headshot onto easy money. But next in with a quick refrag onto IC. And BC following it up with one onto Peep. Nexon and BZ in a 1v2 against Keys. Now, Keys on the Cali is definitely not some, something to joke about. Her primary sniper is a single shot down, and she has her secondary known as the Pocket F2 for its insane fire rate and insane damage. But with 30 seconds on the clock, Keys does have the Diffuser, but not Sight quite yet. They're going to have to try to do something to try to make their way in. Slow peaks on the corner. Their first obstacle is probably going to be Nexon holding from Pillars. Is she even going to check the angle? That's the real question. 10 seconds left. She's going to have to try to do something. Pulls out the secondary. Just a little quick peek. No smokes. Oh, the nice shot on the Mozzie. And it's not on into a 1v1. Two seconds to find the smoke. And he's just running away, playing it safe. And rightfully so. Beautiful time game coming out from San Antonio in the last few seconds. Yeah, Smoke decided to run him around and smoke him if you got him, making sure that he uh, stayed in the game rather than chancing the loss on the round. That was a really well uh programmed play by him he was able to hold off just you know play cool get some trigger discipline don't push yourself into a situation where you may or may not lose uh that was really well done and it's now two to one for the university of texas on this defense uh we're gonna have to see if anything gets switched up here is it looks like peep has opted to go back towards the nomad we'll see if he six picks off but again that defense seems to be really working out for texas at the moment so they're going to be holding on to their lineup moving back uh, basically just a lot of that utility burn option like we said it's worked really really well so far uh, it's going to be all in Auburn's hands at the moment to whether or not they're going to be able to push onto some of these sites and do the damage necessary to, to pick up a few more win rounds yeah it's I don't know Texas really being smart with this utility tonight because I misspoke earlier it's actually Auburn who banned so yeah not even Texas so Texas saw this and they're like hey they're not going to have as much soft reach, as much utility, uh, I guess, explosives. Um, so we're just going to run the heck out of it, right? With, there's already a meta that's based around the attack, bringing enough utility clear to clear the defense's utility. That's a nice little tongue twister for you. So let's, let's just rub it in, and that is exactly what they're doing. Only bringing the mute, though, to try to deny this bedroom wall. I see probably again going to be trying to be be pushing below to try to clear some sort of defender gadgetry but uh, the vertical angles i don't think are opened up quite yet on second floor some shotgun blast going out i think that's more for the rotate holes maybe they're not playing vertical holes this round maybe that's just like a one-off thing they get a nice pick off of it and then they just keep them closed that way they don't get fragged later on yeah if you you keep it down to like levels so you can control it or even just small things oh. to kind of protect specific rounds as we're seeing here is uh bz opening up a few extra small peak holes to take a look down and around but doesn't seem oh. like that's going to be happening as oh we see digital missing the shots as ash looking through that hallway just like milliseconds off now i'm just joking it was uh <laughs> running the faster than hussein bolt across that hallway but uh, auburn taking a little more of a methodical approach we do have ourselves uh, a little bit of error. There's siding on the error position here. And it looks like they're going to go for maybe a multi pronged attack. They're taking Attic this time, opening up for that rotate into kids, as well as the main 
stairwell and main bedroom as we see the rest of his team kind of getting themselves in that position holding those hallways and windows hey i see you've already responded spades but uh luke kobe r6 in chat asking swagger that's your mark <laughs> trust me i've already asked this before we have even started i was i thought i was about to meet the man himself but no fortunately not uh this is spades the one true spades by the way Opening it up though, easy money's gonna find the pick on the IC. IC being again the one who gets opening picked. But Peep with a nice quick refrag onto next, and that's the smoke off the board. Those toxic babes are no longer going to be in use. But Auburn has to try to push through this attic, which is kind of a tough push. It's very linear, it's a straight wide haul. It's not really something you wanna be pushing. It's it's really tough. A defender could swing out at any time and take the pick. But finally, Zira is going to be back off into kids, letting Auburn push up a little bit. But easy money actually holding below inside of oh oh meeting hall. That's what it is. Meeting. Oh, my goodness. It's going to be looking through this hatch, looking for the head of that's oh, Nomad. And no, <laughs> Peep knows he's holding that and finds a nice headshot on easy money. A beautiful pick. Now Auburn with the one man advantage, but with 35 seconds on the clock, they're gonna have to try to put some sort of presence onto site. Dynamite and Keys pushing from Master are gonna almost get the Master wall open, but Digital's just gonna walk in through site and find the head of Easy and Ton. Swinging in through Kids is gonna find Wamai as well, but not before he can find Peep. A beautiful take from Auburn, beautifully set up. The nice split push from Master as well as Attic, but Digital kind of got tired of waiting and said, yeah, you know what? I'm just gonna walk in and click heads. Yeah, and Digital showing the superiority over Analog in that one as he just went absolutely ham at the end of that round, getting in there and capitalizing on the last few seconds that were left on that round to get the win for his team. As Zero was trying their best to hold off and maybe get themselves the crucial extra seconds on their side, but unfortunately, as uh, Digital started pushing in, time aired his rary head onto the side there, and it unfortunately turned his... Uh, timetable around and that was just the end of it for uh the university of texas but uh as it goes forward here it seems to be a back and forth battle especially that last one downstairs we had both teams trade fragging back and forth back and forth down to almost the last man where it became a 2v1 and again keys walking in with that pocket f2 to dousing one and smoke had to run away at the time to, to win effectively to win the bomb. round and put it in the win column for them but it's just back and forth for both these teams and this has been i don't know about you but i'm actually quite enjoying watching these two teams frag it out between the two of each other. i i am already i mean close games are always the most exciting um and i mean again like you said keys just being this kind of this force to be reckoned with on this cali I, I'm always scared whenever I play against like a, a like a halfway decent Cali player and Keys is making it look pretty easy um, Making sure that the walls get open, but also putting some people down with that sniper rifle and the pocket f2 as well is definitely scary but anyways San Antonio oh, sorry, Auburn going to be pushing this top floor site again. They did lose this They did lose this site round one, but as we saw they just won it last round it's just going to come down to what is Texas going to do to try to stop their push. The split push coming from Attic and from Master. Master really not having that much effect. Uh, it was a little late in the round to have any sort of push from Master. Uh, I know Ace was probably about to open up that wall, but again, Digital just walks in and frags out. How is Dynamite in tower so quick? I didn't even see him get there, but he's up in tower holding that angle. Ready to open this attic wall up. There's a mute jammer on it, so he will have to wait, but BZ, that was a peek out of window, is going to find Digital. That's massive. Digital is the top fragger from Auburn right now. That's a huge pick. Yeah, that's going to do some serious damage against Auburn's attack at the moment. Is uh, Basically, as we, we didn't exactly catch on to it the right of way, but it looks like Tone switched off to Ella instead, and Nexon picked up the... Uh, the Jagger play. There's no smoke on the board for the defense. And on the other side, I see picked up on uh, Capital there, bringing a little bit of a different utility, if you will. Uh, but again, 
Digital losing the cranium branium as that SMG 11 finds him at range and just drops him like a sack of potatoes. We're going to have to see who's going to step up on Auburn's side to fill the blanks and fill that gap, or will Texas capitalize on that early bird kill and put another one in the win column for them as we're watching on the top side there and back to the bottom side. Keys watching patiently on that second floor doorway into that main master bedroom, using that sniper rifle to whatever effect he can currently use it as, but it doesn't matter what he seems to put himself into, the effectiveness is never the question. Yeah, this really should be Texas's round going forward. Unless Auburn pulls off some crazy sort of, you know, two, three piece. Auburn really needs some sort of hero play to try to bring this round back. But again, BZ, the top frag for Texas, has found the top frag for Auburn. And now they're just waiting out the time, and rightfully so. Once you have the man advantage, especially when you're on defense, you just want to buy. You just want to waste time. You want to let the clock just tick down ever so slowly. That's exactly what they're doing. The smoke bolt coming out from IC on the Capitao is going to block some lines of sight here as he pushes up through Attic. People kind of eager to jump through that window, but he's going to wait for IC to clear it all. But Womai well, is going to swing and find the head of IC and on a Nomad as well. Zyra not quite letting go of that Attic hold just yet. He is very low on health. A single bullet from the AK or the Kelly's rifle will definitely drop him. But it's a 2v5. Texas, all players still on the board. And Malusi holding below with a nitro in her back pocket, probably waiting for some sort of call for when the attackers are gonna push in. Right, even they even gonna be able to get in? Yeah, Dynamite finds the pick on Zyra, finally putting him out of that small tower. Ace tries to run in for the diffuser, but Ella shuts him down. And Callie dropping down to try to take Malusi's uh, focus off of the planner. Just not quite enough time. Yeah, there's just <laughs> I, that was a desperation play, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> Auburn was being picked off and slowly whittled down. There really wasn't a whole lot they could do, especially with Malusi down below with that pocket Nido, uh, as well as the amount of individuals still left on site, whole, uh, hard holding it. It was going to be a death nil, like just absolutely fantastic abilities to push in there and even get the plant off in the first place, let alone trying to pick up the win. Is uh, now switching over. We got BZ picking back up on that smoke. They're keeping Wamai. Easy money grabbing Cade. We've now got ourselves the meatball man himself, Pasta Chef Maestro coming inbound. And uh, not much change on the other side. As it looks like, well, maybe people pick up on Maverick. I mean, we got ourselves a little bit of a Logan Paul walking in. And I see sticking with that Capitale. Lo Logan. Are you referring to Maverick as Logan Paul? Yeah, Maverick. Uh, yeah. bomb. You know, I, mm, I'm not going to be able to unsee that, man. Yeah, <laughs> I, you know, I root it for you. I root it for I, you. I kind of like Maverick. And I... <laughs> not anymore. I can't. I cannot <laughs> believe you just did that. I'm, mm, I'm actually kind of upset. But anyway, <laughs> moving sorry. on. It's, mm, I, I want to say it's okay. But is it? But it's not. It's not. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Auburn bringing just ample amounts of hard breach utility utility this round. Dynamite go. with the ace. Peep on the Maverick. And I see on the Capitan with that secondary hard breach. I love to see that secondary hard breach gadget. It's very new. I, I really haven't seen it be impactful yet. Uh, I've brought it a few rounds, but mostly on coastline where you don't need a hard breach anyways. But I would really like to see that be the reason an attacker wins the round. Right? I want to see some sort of massive impact coming out from that. But we're just going to have to wait and see. The Cali player here, Keys, is just doing some nice quick peeks and pre-fires towards Tun, who's just holding construction. He does have some sort of help from BZ, who's holding deep in construction with a shield. But this round around, or this round, yeah, this time around, Tun doesn't have any shields on Pillar, so he's kind of vulnerable from the tower stairs push. The smoke canister from Ace comes down, and BZ in response throws a smoke canister of his own to try to stop the push. And stop it, it does. The attackers are not going to be able to push into construction just quite yet. BZ still with a shield and two ADSs to protect it. It's going to be trying to hold it down, but I see with a flame bolt is going to flame, and it's not going to go behind the shield. I don't think BZ has any magnets protecting him here. Magnets being the only counter for Capitao bolts, but Ace is going to try to swing this in prone on the floor with a shotgun. BZ is going to punish Dynamite. Definitely not what you wanted to happen there. That's the hard reach gone, but Ton 
just rubbing it in even more. He's going to find a pick on the IC. He must have swung that door in towards construction. That's more hard breach off the board. So, Peep, still on the map, still does have some sort of hard breach. This round is not over for Auburn just yet. Digital still alive, pushing down main stairs, could just frag out again. He has been seen to do that a few times. Peep tossing a nade mat in towards back construction. It's going to get caught by the ADS. Another Lance going out. And I believe that's the last of the ADS charges. Yeah, it, they have fried a lot of utility with that setup. Um, I think if no, if they f kind of figured out whereabouts where that a the ADSs were, they could possibly get the grenade to catch in the corner of the uh, wall there before it gets anywhere close to it. And maybe take down the shield that way, but they just don't know. And oh, easy money drops the dollar bills and digital goes down. <laughs> As Peekaboo and the rest of his teams are starting to try and push in, but he are cross-fired to all living hell as you got one sitting on column. I think it's Ton, and he's got the Cade also on the other side with the easy money. Now they're trying to break in using that Maverick torch to give themselves maybe something, anything to get through as they have not identified that. Yeah, it looks like that rotate's been armored back up and keys trading shots with uh, Cade. Neither of them really landing anything, but again, this is all on the defensive side's complete advantage. Is the time is just ticking away. Father time being absolutely cruel to uh, Auburn right now as they're trying to push in. Ton playing around, trying oh. to get some shots. Peekaboo comes around the corner, and he drops the bags on Dollar Bill. But again, it turns around again as Ton gets the last one on Peekaboo, and it looks like Breezy dropping the keys yet again. What a, <laughs> what a fantastic little bit of the round, but man, Auburn is just being hemmed in in some of these attacks. I kind of I kind of got worried for Texas there. They had a couple defenders lined up pushing Cali in construction. Oh yeah. And if she had a well placed shot, she could have taken two defenders out. But uh, I I would have been so psyched to see that. But unfortunately, that's just not how it worked out. San Antonio finally winning two rounds in a row. But now they're on the side swap, so they're going to be attacking now. It's kind of a bump in any momentum that they had going. But it could be a bump that propels them forward. We'll just have to see. Auburn playing quite aggressive on the defense with the flanking and roaming could kind of be reflected into their attack. And I'm not quite sure if Auburn's ready for that. We'll just have to see. Sixing off the castle in favor of the Valkyrie. Uh, Valkyrie is definitely a, an operator you do tend to six onto because her cameras are more of the stealthy variety and hopefully the opposing team doesn't bring an iq but nexon has been showing the iq the round all Attack along so it doesn't really matter they're gonna have some sort of utility to try to deal with those black eyes regardless though bz bringing out the havana zero on the ace a couple hard breaches coming out for texas how he's suggesting a little bit of a split push like auburn was doing on their attack but we're just gonna have to wait to see easy money again on the cali i've noticed a lot of teams recently have been running the cali and it kind of makes sense thatcher is almost banned 100 percent of the time uh more like 99.9 .9, but close enough so it makes sense to see more Callies being brought and people i don't know cali mates again they scam I, I guess i just have ptsd yeah you know it, it is uh it's a 50 50 drop when you see a cali get picked whether or not it's somebody who's just playing the fact that they think it's a sniper rifle from call of duty or the other fact is they yeah they basically just turn into an absolute terminator and they just that just anybody and everybody you even have a piece of your head in a window and it's gone and somehow they find you from across the map it's peekaboo trying to get rid of those drones that are just being thrown at him a reckless abandon but keys comes in and drops here and easy money oh there we go as he comes around the corner and next and gets the exit frag there on but wow that's a lot of damage ace gone easy money also playing that uh cali gone that's you got one hard breach left but if there's any wall denial whatsoever unless next can get it from underneath that's that's going to do a lot of problems to their attack it looks like there doesn't seem to be really any wall problems going in over there and it looks like breezy oh. dropped peekaboo oh that's gonna be hurtful as it, it's right through that habana hole oh, that's that's gotta put a little bit of uh wind in the sails on the attacking side after losing those two laps but again time ticking down a minute 50 left lots of time left technically speaking but they do have to start getting their act together as it does look like the three-man team getting themselves ready to push in to get the respects from texas moving into that main 
uh, bedroom there, the master bedroom, trying to take out those movement denial uh, gadgets and the barbed wire as well, trying to look for those gadgets IQ, having a little bit of a problem, not realizing it's behind the wall, not in front of him. Yeah, Texas really being efficient with their attack here, opening up that bedroom wall. Ton had already opened up classroom window from below and used a breaching charge to remove any sort of bandit wires that were on that wall. And since Keys jumped out earlier in the round, bandits already taken off the board. There is no tricking that can be done. Ton flashing in through this double window. He's going to try to jump in, but he jumps in right into the Alda, the Maestro. And yeah, the Alda is not a weapon you want to push into. His dynamite just goes on a tear through BZ and through Ton. It's not on just to Nexon, who's gone down the main stairs themselves. 1v3 now. It wasn't even 3-3, but the attack just didn't quite push together. They instead pushed one by one. And Dynamite, again, with a triple to finish that wall out, just letting the choppers sing. Yeah, that's that's the downside to pushing to, to, for... Okay, let me start over. When you try to push all together at once, it has to be done perfectly. Because if it's mistimed even slightly, then you have one person push in from here, then the other person push in, then another, right? When you do a, a, a coherent push, everyone has to go in at the same exact time or else you're just meat in the grinder. Yeah, and like we saw there, <laughs> Meatball Maestro had the meat grinder going and there's <laughs> plenty on for the spaghetti tonight. As we're seeing, uh, again, a back and forth Go here, go there, kill them all, and that seems to be the end of the story as uh, Texas walking into Auburn's defense and unfortunately melting, especially with those uh, beginning frags by Keys running out with that SMG and absolutely dominating uh, Easy Money. And if I remember remember, blah, remember the other one, there, I, I getting the name. I think it was Easy Zyra. Money and Zyra, yeah. yeah. And that was a massive opening for Auburn, however, it was eventually brought down to a 3v3. But again, the last three uh, sitting there for Auburn were able to melt them down, and it was a 1v3. And at that point in time, only uh, only gods and heroes can believe the tales of those who have won those odds. <laughs> what a way to just set the pace for your defending half, by the way. He's just saying, yeah, I'm going to vault out a big tower, get a two-piece. I might get traded out, but hey, one for two, that sounds like a win. And it resulted in a win for Auburn in the end. Now, Texas probably could have brought that at, brought that back towards the back half. It did end up being an even 3v3, but unfortunately, Auburn just held it together, held their angles. And again, Meatball Boy with the Alda is definitely not a force you want to be pushing into, at least by your own. But now going all the way in the basement. We've only seen so f uh, two sites so far on this map. Just second floor and basement. There are two more sites, believe it or not. They are tertiary though, so you don't see them too often. Because we didn't see, we haven't seen defense win two consecutive rounds, except for San Antonio, their last two rounds before the side swap. Auburn though, gonna be trying to change that. They're interestingly enough not holding construction whatsoever. They have a mute jammer on the wall from construction into that hatch drop room and a mute jammer in from construction wall into the main site. But Cali using a lance on that wall is going to clear the mute jammer and it can now be open. I see playing a shield on pillar, probably throwing those magnets in front of him to try to stop any sort of explosives coming his way. The attack, if they clear this quick enough, they could clear it very quickly considering he gets his gadgetry over time. Yeah, actually a really nice throw there. He actually let the flash go by through the magnet, and that caught the lens. Brilliant. But unfortunately, it's just not enough. Uh, Texas just has the utility to throw at this shield, and that's what they're going to do. And they now really have control of pillars. Zyra here going to probably be opening up this room next to him, but no, he's going to open up the room into sight. And it's going to be fully open. No impact for coming out from the attack, but instead two nitros come through the breach. And Dynamite just probably, or next thing, sorry, probably just poop his pants a little bit there. That's not a, a great sight to see. But Texas, with a man advantage with a minute 15 left. Yeah, that was a great Nido. He threw it over like Tim Tebow and God willed the kill as Keys drops Zyra and again, again as ICU turns ton into absolute liquid pace with that edge gun. It's all up to Keys holding that one side and Keys drops easy money. As it comes down around the other side, we got pushing in over towards the freezer as we have ourselves BZ, the last man standing, gets played peekaboo with as Piku Keck takes him down. 
Oh my goodness. Oh, Lucy Goosey Malusi did some serious damage there. That I, was that was disgusting. This I know Auburn the flawless round again, just really rubbing it in, and we will finally be able to get to see one of those tertiary sites. Speaking of getting to see easy money, kind of flaunting the Yana, an operator we haven't seen quite yet. Definitely valid in the current meta. She has two grenades at her disposal. Kind of a Zofia replacement, right? You have some sort of ranged explosives you can use. Plus, she has un unlimited, in quotes, drones. Uh, she has access to her hologram every so often. Yeah, it's a limited amount based on the time. But, you know, unlimited in terms of siege. Very true. And on top of that, too, uh, even though we are playing siege here, but... If used in the proper situations, it can take attention, even for a split second, off of an actual operator, which Defenders then allows them to either get the kill or to push a defender out of a critical position. A lot of the guys that we're witnessing here today may or may not be faked out right away by the Yana drone coming through, in which, you know, their attention may not be pulled off right away, or it may not, it might more be a second thought to them. But again, applied in, the, in a critical timing, for specific things either say a really hard push on one side using that yana drone just for a second to pull the attention away from a critical defender that ends up winning the round i say that's pretty decent in my book so that's not a bad pick on his side on the other one we've got breezy picking up the maple man himself the syrupy god also known as buck zira breaking up on ace and we've got next and grabbing sledge and ton bringing in the ashes to ashes dust to dust but a frag in the head, and you know that's a must. Dynamite and the rest of his crew also using that uh, utility burn-off method with keys picking up Jaeger. We've also got IC bringing the whammy forward, trying to use those magnets to pull as much of the utility away from them to possibly harness it against their enemy as we're watching keys here, trying to do another cheeky push out through tower, but there is no one around. Uh, talk about a painter making a masterpiece for no one to see it as next is pushing in through that top uh spot there through armory getting in through that one hallway in front of master just trying to clear it out i don't really think he's got much opposition upstairs if any at all as the rest of texas starts to get pour in through that master bedroom and others points with ton on the other side of the double store window at uh, auburn just pretty much holding sight having a grand old time but sledge is now opening up some skylights here as a night out comes up but it went the wrong way and there's no damage done and it's a little bit of a useless one but at the same time at least put some pressure on the sledge to move around as he is now continuously going back to home depot and causing the demolition renovation of the century this kid's room better be a masterpiece for everyone else to look at as uh he has now pulled up most of the floor and he's using those peak holes to look downwards yeah, the defenders that were just kind of hanging out, having a great time on site, waiting for the attackers to push him. They got kind of a rude awakening. Is this ceiling above them just started being blown to bits? Next thing though, rotating around to Attic, going to be helping out BZ, trying to push Keys and Malusi out of meeting. And they, they did get him out of meeting, but not before Keys could find the pick on the ton. That's really not something you want to see happen. You would ideally like to take them out without losing anybody. But they're still holding close to that door. They're going to have to try to push them back farther from that before they can put any sort of presence on the kitchen. Easy money with a grenade. Cooking is going to find the IC. Beautiful grenade. And of course, it's the one my the guy who has gadgets that count at grenades. It's just got to love the irony. Yana kind of droning herself through here. It's going to be pushing in towards kitchen. It's going to see the smoke. And he kind of knows it's the hollow, so he's not in a rush to frag it. But the calls are going to be being made. Yana pushing in four bullets into the G36, not reloading it. Please tell me she knows. Oh no, this could be detrimental. BZ taking a little bit of damage. Keys rotating around backstage is going to go to pre fire through the wall, but they read into it and pre fired him. Unfortunately, not downing him just yet, but he will be very, very low on HP. Cyber, though, in kitchen, putting the diffuser down. Malusi just on the other side of the wall from him. He does have Nexon as the cover, but it's not going to quite work as he finds the frag. Pokey with two, digital with one. Easy finds one though, and Digital's on the diffuser. Luckily, BZ is close by and gets him off, but Jaeger with the flank with the nice trade. Peep is going to be diffusing. Oh, and that's all of the attackers down. Auburn 
to win their third defensive round in a row. That one looking a lot closer than the previous rounds. The Fuser did in fact go down, but it doesn't matter. Auburn ended up retaking it and winning it out in the end. Yeah, I don't know about you, but uh, I definitely felt after when Tun went down there that Auburn had a much better chance. But all of a sudden, uh, with Keyes getting cut off from sight with those sledge holes up top, um, it, it almost seemed to tilt heavily in Texas's favor. But uh, if we saw there just before Breezy looked over towards the breach where the diffuser was down, there were three of Texas's players in a row. I don't know if they just got collateral or what but it looked like they lined up and they got absolutely pulled apart that was their round to lose and unfortunately they volunteered for the loss and they're going to take one here as that round finishes out and it's now five to four it has been neck to neck on both sides so far both giving everything they've got uh, either getting some extra quick picks off the round or doing some serious utility damage both teams are bringing their a game on this one True, but San Antonio has yet to win an attacking round, and if they plan on keeping this a close game, they're going to have to try to step it Attackers up. Kids' bedroom and basement quite definitively went in the direction of Auburn. Kitchen dining, not so much, but that is a tertiary site. You kind of expect that. Now Auburn has completed a perfect site rotation. They're going to be going back up to kids' bedroom, a pretty strong site. Texas is going to have to try something a little bit different. And from the operator picks, I'm not convinced that they have any solid plan. I remember last time they did try to push kids' dorm keys, did jump out of tower and find an early two-piece. So hopefully, now that they have a full five, or considering they get to the building with a full five, it might turn out a little bit different. Next in on the Capitown, I'm a huge fan of Capitown in general. Um, those flame or smoke bolts being really effective, even if there is a Wamai on the board, um, still quite the utility. Uh, but instead, he's not going to be bringing the secondary hard breach like Auburn did. He's going to have the Claymore in his back pocket, and rightfully so. Auburn has been quite antsy, constantly moving around the map. Not quite roaming at the beginning of the game, but instead going for those late flanks. Peep. Going a little bit aggressive, just looking for those drones. His next in isn't quite going to be going into armory just yet, but it's going to be looking, kind of kind of dipping his toes in the water, testing it out. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been kind of crazy. Uh, like we said, it, it, both teams seem to have some sort of roaming presence, and it seems to be putting a lot of pressure on the attacking team. Uh, Texas, like you said, have not won a single attacking round yet. They're not out of it because it keeps getting close. And statistically speaking, eventually they're got to pick up at least one. I'm, I'm hoping that speaks true to keep things a little competitive here as Texas has definitely been putting on a show in some cases, but everyone is prone to mistakes at some time. And unfortunately, some of those mistakes have cost them a few rounds. However, going back into it, Texas opening up a different avenue of approach. And we've got one being pulled no. down as Peekaboo turns the corner and plays his favorite classical child's game and takes him off the board as next and grabs the floor and takes a dirt nap there as that's a lot of utility pulled off ton also taking a serious amount of punishment on that one you'd think the person with no head hit box would uh, possibly not take so much damage but wow that looked like it was a lot on that turnaround uh, we also have peekaboo who now has fallen back and decided to hold into sight instead breezy also trading some quick shots around the corner this is starting to get themselves into a position where they can start doing some damage, but I don't know if they can play a war of attrition here. They need to start getting some outright frags and not taking extra damage, but Auburn is playing patient. They are not pushing anywhere except for Keys, who comes up behind Ton and punishes the man. <laughs> and Breezy picking up, and it just seems to be trades back and forth. Auburn still five men on the board. University of Texas has lost two with Nexon and Ton both out of the race on this one. They need some support and they need to work together here and stop taking it as a 1v1. As uh, that is not going to favor. Yeah, Auburn just playing this very smart. They have the man advantage. All they have to do is sit down and let the attackers come to them. And BZ is going to come to the keys, but come right in his head. Put a quick, nice, like, coherent kills from three different members on Auburn. It's going to end the round out. Almost looked like that was planned and perfectly executed. But Auburn, 
winning their fourth defensive round in a row, bringing them to match point. Now Texas has to bring back two rounds in a row to even tie this map. Uh, remember, CEA season does not have overtime. You can only tie a map or win it. Um, we go to six. So now Texas is really kind of on the chopping block here. Um, I, I like their spirit with these split pushes that they're doing, but they're being split too much. They're having all the hard breachers push tower, all the soft breachers took master, push master. So then the hard breachers pushing tower, when they come up against the shield, they can't do anything about it. When the soft breachers push master, they come up against a reinforced wall. There's not much they can do. It's There needs to be a, a bit more teamwork going on from Texas if they want to try to take at least one or two more rounds from Auburn. But then again, Oregon is Auburn's map pick. It is kind of expected that they'd win it out. And considering Attackers the fight that San Antonio put up on the first half, even if this map ends right now, we still have Villa, and that's going to be quite the map between these two teams. Yeah, that's again, that's just another one in this whole plethora of matches that we're going to be watching here as these two teams, again, duking it out to the final death. Um, like you said, teamwork seems to be the problem, not necessarily the skill. Uh, San Antonio can definitely put the frags on the board, as we've seen with several of their members doing some serious damage whenever they get in a fight. However, a 1v1 or a 1v2 is putting yourself either at a 50-50 chance or at a disadvantage, and that's something you don't want to be doing. You want to give yourself every advantage and placing their specific operators where they will do the best or the most amount of damage to the defending side team is what you need to be doing, and it just doesn't seem to be lining up as you stated already. As we're now back downstairs here as Auburn setting up a basement defense, again, not holding construction. They just armored it up, and they're going to let it with a whim and a prayer here. Is uh, It looks like San Antonio pushing in now, or at least a little bit more cautious on their push, as they're going to use those drones to try and make sure their approach vectors are clear. Yeah, I, I, I'm not even sure if Auburn reinforced some of construction there. I, I thought that looked soft. It may have been. No, they did just do that. Yeah, it was it's just fun. reinforced. That could have been scary if Texas saw that out early round and decided to hard push that. But it looks like Texas is going to be going for more of a main stairs freezer push instead. Now, every single round so far, Auburn, I believe Texas did this on their defense as well, but they've been bringing a Cade and electrifying both the freezer hatch and the open area hatch, which has kind of let them not worry about their backs all too much. Just throw some barb down on the ground and then you don't have to worry about it. But Nexon, walking down those main stairs, is going to find Keys, who was prone in the corner there. I don't know if he caught him lacking or if he was on drone or what. Must have had a drone there, spotting him out. But Nexon is going to get the opening pick regardless. That's looking good for Texas. That's what you want to see. But now can they keep it going? Uh, some hard breach going off. Yeah, that's the Habana opening up. Meeting hatch and Ton following up with a headshot on the dynamite. That's exactly what you like to see. Peep getting lit to very low. And Nexon finding another on the digital. This is looking like this is Texas's round. Where was this Texas in this whole game? I don't know if Auburn just wasn't expecting a main stairs push. I'm assuming they were just dumping all of their utility towards the tower. That was not it. Beautiful read from Texas spawning this out. And they now have sight. Nexon pushing all the way up through the rotate. Azira has the diffuser. He has to open up that freezer wall before he can cross. And there is that long angle from pillars he has to worry about. So he's going to have to try to run through. He's not going to decide to smoke it off. His team's covering him. And I see he's going to be taking above. Now, IC is going to have to come up pretty big here. Peep is on very low HP. IC is going to need to take some sort of ground up top, but he misses the Habana. He finally spots her out and takes her down. That's BZ off the board. He's going to drop the hatch right away and continue looking for any of the Texas members. But it's going to be Ton who finds him instead. It's not out just to Peep, who is under 25 HP. Two impacts in his pocket. He could do some damage, but he's instead going to do some damage with his weapon onto the head of Nexon. Evening it out just a little bit. We'll find a little bit of health off of Jackal as well. And he's going to have to switch to that pistol. 14 seconds left. He has about 7 seconds to get on that diffuser. And it's just not enough time. He's too rushed. And Ton is going to finish that round out. Texas finally putting a stop to Auburn's streak here. One more round for this match. Is Texas going to tie this up? Or is Auburn going to get away with this map? 
Yeah, you know what? That was a little bit weaker of a defense than I was expecting from Auburn. Uh, I believe it started off with, uh, and it was pointed out by one of our production crew, that Cade was actually on cameras when uh, the Ash next oh, came no. down the stairs. He knew he was not ready. They talk about getting caught with your pants down with no barricade. And that ended up causing him to be franked out right at the beginning of the round. And then just after that, San Antonio mopped up like it was sanitation services all over again. And that ended up being their round. That's their first attacking round. Will they build the momentum to keep going? Or will Auburn put down stakes and start building that wall up and stopping them here in their tracks and finishing out this map? How how was he on cams and not notice that main lobby cam was down? I have no idea. Like, if, if you're on cams in that Attackers much of an exposed spot, you think you'd be paying attention pretty closely to the one camera that kind of covers your entrance. Unless maybe Nexon didn't shoot it and it was just just a humongous brain play to just use that super ash speed and just run by it. But Yeah, I, I think that might have been what happened because I think he was sl switching between cameras and at just on that crucial moment, he went Hussein Bolt style went right past him. That, that makes a lot of sense. Some just insane teamwork coming out from Texas then. I wouldn't have even thought about that. But obviously they're bigger brains than me. Regardless though, Auburn kind of looking a little scared now. That round wasn't really even close for them. And now they're going back down to basement. They could potentially have gone kitchen dining if they so choose. But even then, that round wasn't very decisive either. San Antonio did get the diffuser down when they went kitchen dining. Said they're going to try basement again. Maybe perhaps rotating some of their utility over towards main and freezer this time. Because that's what it looks like Texas is going to be pushing again. Texas bringing the Cali as well. That way she can use her utility to clear those electro claws off of the hatches if she so chooses. But instead, Texas is going to go for a little bit of a roam fear first. Make sure that there's no defenders off of site that could potentially be a problem later. And unbeknownst pronounced to them, there are no defenders on the roam. So beautiful, quick roam clear from them. Yeah, that'll definitely uh, keep the wasted time down as quickly as possible. But again, on the second note, as we're seeing here, a barricade has been put up to stop that push automatically through. And uh, it seems like Auburn has decided, you know what, we made a mistake here. We need to correct this problem. And it seems like they're playing much more. Oh, no. I was about to say safe plays here as Dynamite runs underneath the hatch and damn near gets fragged out by Nexon. He's definitely looking to get another one in the, around the same spot as he did last time, looking for anyone laying down behind that cover. Uh, except nobody's there this time as we do see easy money and the rest of the team opening up the secondary hatch in the meeting room as Nexum trading back between that hatch and going down towards the double door trying to get himself a frag but he's waiting for his teammates now to start playing some pressure on the other side to get someone to peek as we're now getting bullets traded back and forth through the freezer area as one of the reinforced walls have been pulled down a little bit. And here we go as Nexum pushing into laundry. He's got himself a nice little angle going back and forth over towards that uh, cubby hole there and towards the rotate as he knows there's somebody there, but will, oh my goodness, Keys is inches away from death and he doesn't even realize it as he now falls back into a more secluded corner and Nexum not being able to get the frag on him. Yeah, this is 50 seconds left, still a 5v5. Whoever gets this first pick could very well just set off a domino effect that later wins them the round. But the attack isn't looking too great here. They've made some pretty decent ground, but they still don't have any sight presence. And the clock keeps ticking down. It does not stop. And they're going to have to try to do something. They might just have to run in and try the trade, but Digital's going to start us off with a headshot onto easy money. And there is no trade that comes out. Finally, Tun finds the head on the keys as well, keeping it an even 4v4. There we go, Zero and Tun find one apiece, and it's now down to a 4v2. They now have sight presence, they have laundry all to themselves, and they can cross and plant. Zero's gonna be putting diffuser down, it's down to IC and dynamite. Smoke canister not doing anything for the diffuser, and Nexum is gonna push and find dynamite and BZ with a pick on the IC. Texas really scaring me towards the end there, letting Auburn put four rounds on the board in a row. Then they're like, yo, guess what? We're not out of this. We're gonna we're gonna bring it back. We'll tie it up real quick. Talk about not being down and out. These guys show the mental fortitude 
to put everything they had left into those last two attacks. And boy, did it every show. What They, they made it look almost easy. Uh, Auburn looked like their defenses were absolutely on point. They had everything working for them the whole way around. And then Texas just almost lit a fire under themselves and got themselves coal walking across the tightrope and were able to balance it all the way to the end for the tie. What, what a great display of, I guess you could say teamwork, which is the exact same thing we said earlier, which was their problem. They, they turned it around and really good for San Antonio. Well, well played on both teams. Yeah, definitely. This second map, both teams are going to be going in with quite the grudge for each other. That was Auburn's pick, but a tie. Both these teams are so evenly matched. I have no idea how Billy, uh, how Villa is going to end up. We will be going into a quick five minute break, but again, don't go anywhere. This next map, it's going to be quite the boxing match. Yeah, and we'll see you in about five minutes.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back from that quick snack break. I hope you got yourself your favorite bubbly drink and your favorite cheese it snack as this next map is going into Villa, and you're not going to want to miss this, that first one. Wow, what a doozy. As Auburn really brought into the command on that defensive side, but San Antonio bringing the last two rounds to fruition for the tie, that had me on the edge of my seat there for a bit. I really did not know what was going to happen until Auburn uh, just got pulled apart on that very last round. I Oh, Texas had the 4-2 lead. Auburn bringing four rounds in a row back. And then Texas finally stepping it back up for those last two. I I had no idea. The, the map started being 1-1, one, 2-2, one, 3-3. Two, two, three, three. And then Auburn started pulling ahead, and then Texas brought it back. I'm just I'm super excited to see what Villa has in store for us. Before we do get into the map, we do have to do a quick shout-out to our sponsors, those lovely people which make this possible. Uh, first, we're going to start with Corsair. They're I'm, I love Corsair. They're great. Uh, so they supply some really nice peripherals. Um, they have peripherals for the prize pools as well as they supply some money for the prize pools. Um, what's new.gg. That's N E U. Kind of a little bit of a weird spelling. What's new.gg for some nice CEA merch. I know we just got some like hoodies. They're like the long sleeves with the hoods. I'm, I'm personally a huge fan of those types of shirts in general. So I'm probably going to be copping one of those. And of course, Rogue Energy for all of your gaming energy needs. Of course, use code CEA Siege at checkout for 10% off. Before too long, though, we will be getting into our second map. Villa. Now, Spades, what are your predictions for this map? <laughs> it's funny that you should ask because I don't know. I, I am predicting that there's going to be a heavy Rome presence because both teams showing that ability to be the thorn in the side on the attacking side, uh, really thinking that Ton is going to play on a completely different level on this map. Uh, we've already seen a chat as well as a couple people at home have all also seen it. Ton took a while to get the coal into the engine, but I think he's got that steam whistle roaring and this train has no brakes. He is going to be a factor for San Antonio going forward. But on the other side, Keys was calm and proficient through the entirety of the match for that last map, uh, bringing in the Cali, doing serious work, even when his team really couldn't get into the site and do a proper attack he did not deter himself from trying to put something together if anything uh, to, uh here going forward we're about to start our match and here we go it's going into villa and i just can't wait to see what these two teams bring to the table i i want to i want to say i think one team's gonna win over the other but i i honestly have just absolutely no idea it's, it's so hard to tell. They started going back and forth. Auburn putting a few rounds together. I thought they were going to pull it away from Texas, but then they bought it back. But Auburn, again, starting it off with the Zofia ban. Kind of interesting to see. I'm kind of interested. I'm pretty sure that is a target ban specifically for Ton. Uh, both times she's been banned, they've kind of called Ton out, just kind of taunting him a little bit. Maybe that's why we didn't see him show up at the beginning of last game. You know, just... Some some nice friendly bands are going back and forth. Texas though responding with the Monty band, kind of interesting to see. Uh, I don't believe he was banned last map. No, he was not, and no one ran him. So I just I don't know if that band could have been used a bit better from Texas side. Maybe they had some sort of intel that Auburn prefers Monty on Villa instead. You never know. Um, Texas finishing their bands off with the Mira. Uh, nothing too out of the ordinary. Auburn banned Mira last map, but San Antonio doesn't want her on the board. And Auburn banning Malusi. That's that's a, like a nice ban I like to see. Both teams used the hack out of Malusi last map. Um, so Auburn might be shooting themselves in the foot just a little bit there. Um, but there is also Legion, who is very, very similar to what Malusi does. Yeah, you know, it's it's interesting. I mean, Monty on this map makes sense. There's a lot of areas where you can bottleneck off people uh, or completely stop a defender from rotating or even, for that matter, get a, a plant down and post-plant. Just sit there and guard it through a singular doorway as long as his teammates hold his rear side. Monty is that of the little mountain, if you will. 
uh, and it can be very, very strong. Again, also Mira being pulled off the board. We've seen what she can do when it comes to holding sites with these, especially the uh, aviation side one. That one can be a absolute pickle to get into unless you're pickle Rick. Uh, if a Mira is around, again, Malusi also stopping the rotates through some of those long hallways with those banshees down on the ground. So it's good that she's been pulled off the board as well. This will allow for a lot more fluid movement. Uh, again, and also being able to have the defenders focus more on either gadgets or just straight out fragging. As we know, this map is going to test the aim skill on both sides of the categories here for both San Antonio and Auburn. I, again, we're just gonna have to wait and see what happens is it looks like uh, Auburn is really going to be going towards, again, a denials type strategy, bringing both Jaeger and Wamai, as well as Mozzie to try and pull down some of the drones. We know that they were using a fair bit of those drones to get as much info as possible on the San Antonio side. And Dynamite also getting the meatball man himself, Chef Boyardee, bringing in the big spoon to start mixing up some mayhem. And uh, again, we're watching San Antonio, all of them spawning in that ruined side, getting themselves ready to push in. Uh, we just have to see how this formulates towards going forward. And we are seeing a little bit of lag coming uh, out of that right-hand side corner icon. Uh, hopefully it uh, gets itself better so both teams can have a, a decent time on this uh, whole map and not have any drops going forward. Wait, 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 wait. Spades, who is Nexum playing? Nexum's, oh my god. Who is I that? See, I did. You know, you know what? There might be a reason why there's a Thatcher in this one. Sorry, I had to make the joke. Oh. <laughs> I told you, you had to be ready for it. I'm never ready. They're always so fluent and so good. Just like it's that so headshot ton bad. just got on the digital. Oh. Yeah, exactly. Digital being wiped off the board. That's the ton we like to see. Texas already coming out with those heavy hits. And that very quick roam clear. And almost another headshot on the IC through that wall. That's a pretty common angle to pre-fire. And fortunately enough for IC, his head was just a little Bomb over to the left. If it was just an inch more to the right, he would no longer have a head. But playing on those red stairs is keys as he finds a pick on a Nomad who's actually pushing up below him. Definitely a nice sort of push coming out from Keys, trying to even the odds up a little bit, but unfortunately, Easy Money is ready for that refrag from Coat Rack underneath there, and keeping the man count in Texas's favor. Definitely some nice player movement here, making sure that those refrags do go out, especially since Texas has started off with the man advantage. Yana again, back on the board with two grenades in her pocket is definitely not something crazy to see. Those could be a huge playmaker in this round if easy money decides to go down below astro she could nade smoke from behind that astro desk from below and remove him without having to worry about any ads or magnets but the sun was going on to that bedroom wall i heard one i believe got open but one's going to be impacted off and my on the deck is going to be decapitated by ton bringing the man count ever more in favor of texas but dynamite trying to bring it back is not going to be successful as zira opens up more of that wall and is now just going to push in. It's not on the peep who does have smoke canister in his pocket. He's going to have to try to push into Statue to try to stop this plant, but Zero's going to be able to get it down. On the flank, easy money coming up. Astro stairs is going to walk through the smoke. Doesn't see the smoke standing there, but he does eventually. It is it is pretty hard to see through that smoke to be fair before anyone gives him crap in chat. I honestly think it was actually more of his, the, the side of the ACOG. But at the same time, he was he was given the opportunity to correct his mistake. And wow, talk about the confidence on that attack. San Antonio coming in with reckless abandon and just knowing where everything needed to be done. Ton taking out just a couple extra seconds there as he swats. I think it was him that cut uh, Digital out in the open. Uh, but he definitely got Maestro with his hiding up behind Statuary there and just doing some serious damage. Both of them doing uh, it was just san antonio as a whole really put forward a tremendous effort with that one you could definitely tell this is a, their map um auburn's gonna have to come up with an answer for this they're gonna have to come up with something quick because if this continues on and the momentum is built on the side of san antonio for this one uh it's going to be very very difficult for them Attackers to pull it to back on the attacking rounds 
Now the real question is, is this just a fluke, right? Because at the beginning of Oregon, we saw the first defending half go one round to San Antonio, one round to Auburn, one round to San Antonio, one round to Auburn. I, I don't know. Texas was looking pretty prominent on that attack, ending it in a 4v1. I, mm, I don't know. Auburn still staying away from that Astro or Aviator game site. I don't I don't know if they have some strats for it that just, they just don't want to show yet, or if they're just not feeling very confident in it. I'm, they're going kitchen before Aviator games. That's something you don't see very often. Perhaps they're trying to throw the attack off a little bit. But regardless, Texas is going to be pushing from the east side. Regardless, BZ already taking a little bit of damage. That must have been friendly fire, right? Probably shooting at that camera. I don't see anyone peeking. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't see anyone that could have gotten a shot off on him there. Well, yes. Either way, it seems like uh, they've gotten their stuff together. It must have just he must have just walked in front of somebody. Yeah, it, it happens. Unfortunately, uh, Siege being. A semi-realistic game for the most part there is friendly fire uh, and just fortunately enough for BZ it wasn't a headshot she'll still be able to gun and still be able to put those air jabs on and still be able to drone some great drone economy coming out from Texas though still all 10 drones on the board that's something you don't see very often usually teams tend to throw their drones away very early on in the round and that's usually something that differentiates some okay teams from some really good teams so definitely a good sign from texas coming out so they're gonna have to use those drones at some point to try to clear i c and digital from this roam up top and astro and master you can see the drones coming out already gonna be spawning out i believe that's i c yep with the lesion but they're gonna have to push through some goose which is gonna be kind of a pain and yeah spotting out the digital on the mozzie as well definitely some good drone work coming out from texas Unfortunately, not really acting upon it just yet. A little bit as they shoot some bullets through the wall at digital. It must have been some drone intel for that. And Legion's now cut off in bathroom and cut off from his life. As the refrag does come out quickly from a digital, but not before Nexon finds the pick on the IC. Nitro comes out as well. And Mozzie, right next to Yana, doesn't quite know his easy money's gonna sit him down. Again, Texas being quite fluent and cutting off the rotates back to site, but Dynamite with a nice refrag. Auburn answering back refrag with refrags of their own, keeping it at a nice even 3v3. There's one minute left on the clock, and Texas is going to have to start doing some sort of soft breach, and really they only have those ash breaching charges left. Yeah, it's it's kind of... This one, this round has turned into exactly what you said it was going to be. It's, it seems to be that both teams are locked in both of them going into a, almost a war of attrition we see Don pulling keys off the board but it's not over yet as people who can't can dynamite are still in that site holding it on reckless abandonment this year as we see ton throwing in some flash grenades one did not go the way he wanted it to as one he still goes and flashes himself but bz finds both of them dropping both the last auburn players for the win and ton was uh kind of disabled there after he threw those flash grenades and uh he flashed himself. I think he also got uh, Peep, though, too, because it didn't look like Peep put up a fight on that one. Yeah, that was almost quite the misplay coming out. Fortunately enough, I want to say that was BZ on the Nomad. Yep, was covering that, so it wasn't the end of the world. Texas did still end up winning that out. And Texas looking looking really kind of clean on this attack. Uh, Villa was Texas's pick, so it would make sense but unfortunately, Digital and Keys just not really showing up like they did last map. Dynamite, definitely still there with that Alda in his hand. He's made a bit of an impact already, but it just hasn't quite been enough. Auburn, going back up to Trophy Statuary, is going to try to defend that site. Once again, still staying away from that Aviator game site. I really would like to know why that is. I want to know if that's because they feel unconfident with it or they know that Texas is super confident with it. Either or, staying away from that site like it's the plague. Or COVID. I guess that's the modern day plague, right? <laughs> I guess so, yeah. But going forward with that, I think it has less to do with that they're not confident with it and more to do with the fact that they, have, they feel like it's one of their higher percentage wins. So why would you knock that off the board right away? Why wouldn't you just try to 
try to shake it up a little bit, trying to pull a win, a random one, if that, from another side before switching off to your more high percentage one. Or, like you said, they could just not have any confidence in that site whatsoever. Doing, or sorry, being that it is San Antonio's pick, that is a very common sight to see, which means they would probably have picked it apart more times than we can imagine on how to properly attack it, take it from specific angles that maybe Auburn isn't prepared for. So by trying to get them on the back step, pushing them uh, from anticipating the different sites that they're going to be picking, this is a smart move on Auburn's part. By choosing the different sites that you necessarily wouldn't pick, you are constantly keeping uh, San Antonio on their toes in regards to what site and what they should be picking, even though they may have already a good idea what they should be doing. They're not following into those traditional roles, which is a good thing. Going in now, it seems like San Antonio is doing the drone work as we've seen them before. Again, at the same time, though, Digital on that Mozzie picked up a lot of drones last round as they were just throwing them through doorways, popping off those Mozzie uh, pest charges, if you will. Uh, Keys looks like he's more hard holding on site with Dynamite and Peak. As I see in Digital holding a little bit farther on the east side, as we are now getting into some serious fights going down long range on those long hallways, as it looks like Digital's taking a little bit of a harder hold on the uh, 90 hallway as well as the vault. He's also supported by IC on the left hand side. Breezy looking through the hallway, trying to see if he can get an angle on no. him. He's going to look down oh. and he's done as IC does you. It takes down Breezy and we get another fight here. Is Digital turning the tide on Tun, dropping him like a bag of buns. And he's still sitting on site next to him, getting taken down by Peekaboo. That was insane. Azira also fragging up on keys in Texas, turning it around. What is going on? Digital, last man alive, easy money versus, uh, sorry, easy money and Nexum versus digital and digital's drop. I swear I thought Auburn had that one and Texas just absolutely turns it around last minute. I, I, I'm Russell Peters right now. My mind has been blasted. I don't know what the hell just happened. My hand is on my forehead. My mouth is wide open. I I thought that was Auburn's first round. They dead to rights had that round. They had the two-man advantage on the Aviator game side. But then Nexon was just in, Avi or in Astro? Like, w what? Auburn focused so much utility and so much manpower on the aviator game side they just completely forgot about astro you cannot be doing that texas just droned astro they're like yeah look it's free walk in nexon picks up a nice two and a three piece off of that as he pushes in through statue and then he starts planning he has the cover from easy money on the yana it's oh auburn should have had that i'm just i'm still just in shock yeah that's got a that that has got to be a, uh, a bit of a, uh, a, sa a wind taken out of the sails of Auburn on that one. So much effort put forward for IC and Digital holding off that east side push. As long as they did, the amount of damage that they did, only to have a small oversight of leaving Astro open. But it was just enough. It was the chink in the armor, if you will. And yeah, that penetrating blow was the end as Digital was the last man alive. Considering he was the first one in contact, that shouldn't be happening as the entirety of the site collapsed behind him. That's just unfortunate. I, I think both of us were thinking the same thing. I think we both thought, oh, God, Auburn is just pulling it apart this time. Well done. Yeah. Like they're going to pick some mm -hmm. points here. And then I think Texas hit the big red button and the nuke went off. And I, just, oh. I don't know how you cast it through that because I was looking at this just like, what? How? Huh? Like, I was so confused, but prompts to Texas there for spawning that out and saying, yeah, Auburn's hard-holding, you know, aviator game side. We can literally just walk through Astro, and that is what saved them that round. Texas really had no business winning that round out, but thankfully they spotted that out. And again, Nexon just kind of walked through Astro and shot put heads, so it, it worked out for him. But Texas, again... Uh, Aviator Games push really didn't work out for them last round. Uh, they totally did get shut down on that side of the map, but they're instead going to be focusing the majority of their manpower on the bedroom side. 
Easy Money still droning out. Probably going to be going for like a solo push there. It wouldn't make sense for the Yana to do that. She can drone herself out pretty efficiently. She does have to worry about digital, but Ton being a little bit of a pre fire actually shoots his own drone there. Not, not the best, but we have some Texas being really efficient with their drone economy, so they can kind of afford to do that. The sun was going down on the bedroom wall. We'll be opening one on each side. I think they got impact trick after that. But Ton pushing Aster is gonna find the head of dynamite. That's the smoke gone off the board. Not an operator you want to lose early on, especially Dynamite himself, who has been quite the fragger. I see though with a quick response, he keeps back him up, taking Zero and Nexon out in Ton. A pre fire on the IC as Maestro goes to pre fire through the hole, but Ton's already pushing in through Astro. That's a triple for Ton this round. Peeking into sight, does a nice quick peek with a pistol, and no, he just steps into the pre fire of keys. A really nice read. Digital though, from the other side of the map, is going to be taking a lot of damage, but BZ pushing in is going to find Digital finally. Now down to a 1v1. BZ versus Keys. Does he know he's in the tight corner? No, he does oh, not. There's man. Keys. That's what we wanted to see. That's what Auburn needed right now. Was Keys to really step it up. Talk about just <laughs> both teams. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Uh, BZ just not seeing out of the corner of his eye. Unfortunately, Akon kind of held it up and it was a really tight situation. BZ pushing in, just did not see Keys, but Keys had the keys to the entire place, and he made it known who was boss on that one, and that was a 1v1 hiding in a corner. Yeah. No, it's not 4 nils. It's 3-1. Uh, no, 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 no. How many, how many name puns you've done? Oh, five. I've been, I've been trying I'm to keep five. five. I missed yeah. one? Oh, my. Yeah, you missed one at the very beginning, but that's okay. Uh, I'll, I'll let it slide. Uh, uh, yes. Five. I think you said 4 nil. It's like, no. What are you talking about? No, I'm just picking no, no, it up. No, no. <laughs> Auburn finally put one on the board. Props to them. Yeah. I actually, I was just thinking this last round, I was thinking that Auburn should bust out their clash, and that's exactly what they're doing. And they're finally going Aviator Games. They finally put a round on the board. They're feeling pretty good. And the clash is such a smart pick coming out because Texas is very, very particular in their droning. They take, a, they take a good long while, and they do it well, but they take a massive amount of time. So I see bringing out this clash is definitely a smart play. Plus they sixed it. That's always brilliant. I'm kind of kind of triggers me when teams just show an operator they haven't taken before. It's, you should have just sixed it. But anyways, brilliant play because that's just gonna slow the attack down even more. Now maybe they should have taken this on a trophy site. Maybe that would have worked out for them. But hey, they won the trophy site before, so who am I to say anything? I see probably I, I'm kind of interested where they're going to be playing the clash. I've seen some pro teams play her on main stairs with the assistance of Wamai. Um, but she'd also be pretty solid in study as well or towards 90. There's there's really ample amounts of places for Aviator game. She can be played and be good at it. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see. I, as long as they possibly... Uh, make sure that there is somebody there to help support him uh, and not left alone unless I see feels comfortable with doing that. It's going to be very interesting to see how that ends up being played out. If played out properly, she can be a massive thorn on the side of the attacking team. However, if she's pulled off quickly and has no effect, then unfortunately for the defending side team, there's no extra uh, pieces of tech that she has brought that it is left behind to help maybe if uh, she ended up getting some extra stuff down possibly but other than that it really ends oh my goodness gracious talk about saying peekaboo i see you and ton hits the floor wow that is a good pick and he's playing it smart by running away and keeping that as <laughs> as far as it's going to go from there he takes the frag and walks away with the w at least in the short term as Ton has been pulled off the board. However, Peekaboo, sorry, Peek, a uh, poke, uh, keg. I'm just going to call him Little Peep from now on Peepo because I can't keg. see it. Yeah, Peepo Keck. There we go. As we see Clash is now seen around the corner. The Ayana oh. has been seen up with a frag grenade, maybe thrown his way as BZ finds Dynamite pulling his wick out. And that's uh, the end of that as they're now starting to try and push their way through as Clash pushing back into the side on the bar side. That 92 vault has now been open. Easy money pushing up through that main stairwell to give a little bit more support, knowing that the Clash might be there. He might catch him in the backside, but no ice. He's fallen back correctly into the bar. However, his support player seems to be Little Peep there. And uh, Little Peep has very little health left. He's got to be very careful on what 
uh, White, he decides to take as BZ takes down Keys, and that is going to be a big frag as Auburn's team starting to be pulled apart. Digital taking down Zyra. Nexum taking down Digital. It is a one-for-one one frag fest, and it looks like San Antonio takes up on that one as Peep is also taken down. It's back to IC playing that clash. The Mr. Clean wannabe, he's got the line, the lineman pine saw here, but will he be able to clean up this mess for his team? I don't think so. As it looks like BZ is coming around, uh, he's just going to be sitting there waiting. As Nexum, Easy Money, and BZ now have the diffuser down. He's got to take out this Ayana. Ayana has been dropped. He's got another oh. one coming from Vault, but he's got no health left. Talk about one HP in a dream. He's got 25 seconds. He's got still lots of time for that diffuser. He's going to have to do some serious damage and do it quickly. He's got two still on the board up against him. As Easy Money probably just sitting there going to be calling out Clash as he comes around the corner. Didn't get the kill on him, but he's got very little time left, and now it's unfortunate, unable to get that diffuser down and get it off. BZ cleaning up IC as he comes through that vault door, and that is the end of the round. Alright, I wonder what would happen if Clash instead just went sat on the diffuser and just put her back to study, right? Because when Clash doesn't have her shield in her hands, it's put on her back. Now, she was very, very low HP. Maybe she could have gotten away with it. That would have been insane to see. That would have blown my mind if she did get away with it. There was probably some air jabs covering it, but I see playing down the clock like that. You may as well at least try something crazy, right? Why not go for it? Yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that one. You know what? Put into that situation, you might as well dip your hand into crazy at that point in time yeah. because... A 3v1 taking up upright fights with very little health left. You might as well play turtle tactics and Defenders see if the sea turtle gets a little bit of environmental help. Other than that, <laughs> I mean, good on him for trying. You know, he put maximum effort there anyway. Um, but uh, yeah, like you said, it would have been hilarious to watch. Uh, it would have been even more funny if he got it off. But uh, it just didn't come to fruition. And that puts san antonio up four to one on this map again it is their map we did expect them to come out strong on this one and they have not shone away from putting everything they've got in their attacks let's see how things progress forward here as auburn struggling to get anything working in their favor as it just seems to turn into like i said before a war of attrition and there are bloodletting on both sides and it's just somehow somebody finds a few extra frags to put their team up top yeah, what a different story from what we've seen on Oregon. Oregon being very close, pretty much up, well, I mean, not pretty much up until the very last round. Now looking not so close as Texas is kind of slipping away from Auburn's grasp here. Now Siege, you tend to see a 4-2 in favor of the defense on the majority of maps, Villa not being an exception. But sometimes maps just tend to be more attacker side. It just depends on how the teams play. So Auburn, even if they lose this site, Although, wouldn't be the best, they'd have a, mo a massive mountain to climb. They're not out of it just yet. It's Siege. I've, wa I've witnessed so many comebacks these past couple days watching Pro League. They're so exciting. And Auburn definitely is not out of this just yet. They have a tie on the board. And Peep. He shot Ton through this wall last round. And yeah, Ton is not having that this round. He's going to shoot Peep through that wall. What a great roll reversal there. Ton getting the opening pick. Beep just playing a little bit aggressive. And Nexon is also going to find digital. Well, my swings into study, but is going to be punished. He's going to be punishing Nexon, rather. Auburn playing quite aggressive here on this round. Definitely not a bad thing, though. They're down three rounds now. They, they need to try to change something up to try to get this back at least close. So I do, I do like the aggression coming out. Unfortunately, it's just not quite working for them. It's easy money finds another pick on the dynamite. It's not on just the IC and keys. Now we have no keys to frag out. And IC on flash does have that shield on her back. She can whip it out and slow the attackers down, which could be huge delaying the attackers. Keys being true to his fragging nature is going to find the head of one. But the diffuser is going down behind vault door. A ton on the cover from study. It's just... It's not going to go down. It's not going to be done. And Crash kind of on the flank here all by herself. She's going to have a bit of a hard time getting back to Diffuser here. She has her gun in her hand, not her shield. She could just start trying to push the defense. It's going to be shot at, but do a little spin so that the shield on her block back blocks some bullets. Easy Money's finally going to find keys. 
and Ton is going to trade with IC. Nice little trade to end it out, but that is going to be the round for San Antonio, bringing it to a 5-1 for San Antonio's attack. Quite an impressive half. It, it has been a very interesting first half of this map, to say the least. However, my I think my comment that I said earlier stands true. Um, if Clash isn't supported properly, then Clash really gets to be a, an inert factor. Um, has he gotten a couple of kills? Yeah, and yes, that quick little turn saved him maybe some extra HP or his life for that matter. Uh, but I just don't see Clash as an operator, the, the, the extras that she brings to the table really making an impact or even a factor for that matter. Uh, on this defense, unfortunately, uh, even though they may picked up a couple of frags here and there, it's they're pretty much inconsequential as they have lost uh, the several times that Clash has been brought out here. And, it, and it's almost heartbreaking as we do see um, nobody's bringing Clash on San Antonio's side. They're, they're going full on. Uh, everyone's going to be having their primaries, no shields, uh, and a lot of of damage capability breezy bring in that shotgun with mute you've got mozzie running around with his pest and factor and as well as we've seen so far he is not once disappointed the meatball man himself chef boy rd with the big spatula coming around he's going to be doing some serious that the thing around when he's got that bottomless mag with the machine gun and again next to bring up that valk carry as well as ton Bring up that Jagger when we've seen so far these different operators have done some serious damage on both maps. Uh, again, it no looks way. like possibly this is going to be interesting to see. Oh, he's chosen to go up the other way. Probably his best option. As Nomad's oh, watching it. Got, oh, no. He's got the Nitro comes out and he takes oh. out IC. Oh, my goodness. There's, oh Valkyrie must have heard Nomad on the Valkyrie cam. It was on top of that little rooftop there, so she couldn't actually see below it. But some great ears on Nexon to hear that Nomad and the Rip and Nitro and know almost precisely where to put it. A really nice opening pick. I thought Nexon was about to jump out that window and Icy was about to punish him for it, but no. Nexon is just too smart for that. San Antonio coming out their defensive round with the opening pick. But not too crazy as Keys finds a attacker. quick response. Doesn't wait too long for that refrag there. No, Mozzie hold up on Astro Table. I don't know if he was droned out, but it doesn't matter. Keys with a double onto easy money. This is the Keys we were missing. We saw him starting to warm up in the back half of the defensive round. But now he's got the IQ. He's got, I believe that was the AUG, if I'm not mistaken. Kind of a weird gun. Yeah, the AUG. Kind of a weird Primary choice to see on IQ. Most people prefer the G8 or the Commando, but AUG still not a bad weapon, and Keys is certainly doing some nice work with it. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. I saw the AUG and instantly thought, well, my, and then it went over and it ended up being Auburn on the attack, and yeah, I've seen the G8 seems to be a much more superior weapon, but clearly in the hands of Keys, it's doing damage, but on the other side, Ton dropping digital at range with that 416C. He's doing some serious damage. And Keys coming in for the third on Ton. He is unstoppable at the moment. But oh. Peasy says, I don't think so. Draws a line to the sand and offs Keys. But Peak comes around the corner and does some serious Attacker damage, dropping him. Injured. It is a Attacker one for one frag fest going back and forth yet again. Dynamite being the only one with health on his side. Peep also on there as well, but he's at minuscule health, but however, it does not stop him from making damage, but Zira is going to be coming around that corner with that machine gun. He's got the blind oh. up, but it doesn't matter as Dynamite ends the Meatball Maestro, and that is the end of Chef Boyardee's cooking show as we know it. Almost a perfect lineup there for the Maestro, but Jackal is crouched. Ace was standing. Unfortunately enough, Ace had that covered down to a T, covering his teammate. Fortunately, didn't save his life, but at least got the refrag and the round win for Auburn. That's the second round on the board for Auburn. This could be just one of those situations where this tends to be an attacker-sided map. We're just going to have to wait and see. Auburn already saying that, hey, yeah, look, we're not out of it yet. 2-5, you know, that's not bad. They still could technically come back and win this map out.
that would mean they would have to not drop a single round. But it's doable. It definitely is. Uh, Texas, going back to Aviator Games, kind of the opposite of what Auburn was doing. Auburn was kind of dreading Aviator Games. They did take it for the last couple Defenders sites. They lost it both times. But San Antonio, feeling a bit more confident with it, is going to go there the first two rounds, even though they did lose it the first time. They're going to run that back real quick, this time with a Wamai on the board. Uh, I was kind of surprised to see Wamai only played it once or twice on the side of Auburn when they were on defense. Um, again, the Zoe is banned. That means that there's a lot less explosive utility on the board. So anything to combat just the limited explosive utility they have already is going to be massive. Uh, but Malusi is banned off the board. So Ton taking the Maestro makes a lot of sense. Yeah, you know, it. Five I, I, Tanya seems to be using a lot more operators that have the Attackers mobility on their side, you know, the Yaggers, the, uh, the Ellas, that sort of stuff. So to see Tun put himself with uh, more or less an anchor around his uh, waist there, and he's going to have to use, I mean, the weapon itself is perfect. I love Maestro's machine gun. It has a box fed mag. He's got himself the ability to keep going when others are completely expanded and be able to push. However, he does lose on that mobility. Whether or not that'll play a, a difference in this fight for him, uh, I'm not 100% sure. As we're seeing easy money taking a couple extra little pot shots through some of these barricades and not realizing that maybe somebody on the other side almost gets a headshot at one point in time, but Peep is looking through that uh, that bathroom there trying to see whether or not he's going to get something and he does get the scan off on easy money's feet and easy decides to run for it his keys is now in there trying to push the defenders out on this side san antonio playing a little bit more smart they've decided to not necessarily take first contact as a problem or try to initiate the firefight on first contact they allowed to fall back and to waste the attacker's time as they try to check every corner and every crevice to see if someone is sitting on the backside. However, going back to it, though, it's it's he's been tracked twice now. It's easy money. He's in the basement just at burning off Jackal's ability to use his third eye, if you will, as he's just going to be watching that back Astro stairwell as the rest of his team seem to be moving up towards red. Again, we've got ton in the vault bz on site with zero also on the other side there and we've got one roaming around the outside but next back on site now and it seems to be almost everyone except for their mozzie player on site as uh this is just turned into more of a waiting game as first contact is now initiated on the 90 hallway nexon has been dropped but he is not out crawling away bleeding out screaming for tactical band-aids and key says no i don't think so you're not going any farther here is uh, now the rest of the team at easy money coming up that red stairwell but he's going to run into digital possibly his digital now turned his back easy money just kind of sitting there waiting for an opportunity to try and push up behind them whether or not digital looks the right way at the right time he has been continuously looking around easy money's going to have to play this in the best way he can breezy grabbing keys and absolutely decks him with the smg 11 at long range but it gets traded out as dynamite explodes and bz is blown away on the other side we're going to be watching to see whether or not they start getting pushed up behind digital's really got to be careful and not watch not watch too much on the other side as easy money takes out digital zero grabs dynamite nice he gets a turnaround frag on tuna but easy money grabbing oh. peep and that's it as ic goes down as well that he was just waiting for the timing and wow what a time to start that was optimal as all heck yeah the patience on this man right from like the first 15 seconds in the round he gets jackal tracked twice in a row both i'm pretty sure were red footprints too he was tracked ticked down four times i'm not quite the jackal main but i want to say those are red footprints Instead of rotating back to site, he just waited in basement. Bill is one of those maps that I I forget sometimes that it has an entire basement. Uh, there's a lot of corners and crevices. So a lot of the times, attackers tend to steer clear of basement for the most part. Um, there are a few pushes like through garage and up pantry stairs if you ever wanted to try that. But just spending so much time in basement, I was kind of worried for him. I thought he was kind of wasting his own time. But he came up, he pressured red stairs just a little bit and got the last two at the end. And that was absolutely huge. Um, 
one of them did get behind the vault door. I don't think they had Diffuser. I think Ace ran behind the vault door and then realized he didn't have Diffuser, which would have been quite the misplay. But, again, it didn't matter. Easy Money kind of helped him out in that respect. Came up behind him and just shot him in the head. So that's always the answer, right? Yeah, hey. that, was, uh, that was interesting. Because on top of that, too, before, rather than pushing, he took Digital out with that Naito on the stairwell. So after he pulled that off, there was no one effectively watching their flank. And it just, it, 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 the discipline, I guess, would be the word to use to wait, uh, it waited out for the best possible time, waited for the pressure to be put on the attacking team to push into sight. And when that happened, he took out the flank protection, and then that was it. That was a, an amazing 3K on his side to secure his team the win. Attackers are moving out to locate a bomb. Yeah, I, that's. I hope we get some sort of interview with him because I definitely want to ask him about that moment. Because that also brought Texas to match point six two. Auburn looking a little bit shaky here. Are gonna have to try their very best to stop Texas from winning this last round. Nexon with the Valkyrie cam outside again is gonna be using that Z ping to spot out some of the attackers. Call out what ops they're bringing but unfortunately astro window will be castle barricaded this time around so he won't be flying through there unless one of his teammates uses an impact on it beforehand zero using a rotate in between triple wall and bedroom kind of interesting to see but this setup just is not working out for texas keys with a quick 2k right off the bat is gonna find romai and smoke does the defense have a reinforcement to block this wall off if not this could be detrimental to them they're at a two-man disadvantage now i don't think they're going to be able to hold that wall but it doesn't matter ton is going to find people lacking as he's trying to set down an air jab keep still confused at where he got fragged from he's i wouldn't be surprised his head was just completely and utterly removed ton still trying to hold astro trying to bring his team back at least to an even man count at the very least but they still are at a disadvantage. Taking out some drones. You can see his teammates on the default camp. That's not going to help. Keys with a triple. Only two more left. Next in below, though, is going to find a quick match around a dynamite. But Keys is not lacking at all. Picks up the diffuser and starts pushing in. Digital finds one on the hero. Taking Keys ace. He's not going to quite get it. Next in rotating back up. Is going to face a cooked grenade that isn't quite going to frag him out. But Digital will instead. What a great round coming out from Auburn. Looking like a completely different team. I I thought that frag grenade was going to get him. I Oh man, that I swear I thought that was going to get him, but um that almost turned out to be a detrimental play, but it worked out in his favor at the end and Auburn picks up a, another round on their side finally tr trying to string some things together at the very beginning it seemed to be very very difficult for them. Um it seems like San Antonio has come out with all of the confidence. Uh, you do have players on Auburn who are trying their best to fight through the mud and the sludge, if you would. Um, but it just seems to be that they're they're trying to find their footing. They seem to be getting a few together, but now they have no space to breathe. It is 63. If they are willing and they are able and they're wishing to push that more mental fortitude forward, I think San Antonio is more than capable to test it for them, and they're going to have to really come together as a team here to finish out these last few rounds and get them on their side. Defenders but uh, again, but I, I, you know, I can't say anything because we've watched several rounds go one way than the other, and we also watched on that last map when San Antonio was down, they came back. I mean, yeah, they had a 4-2 uh, tie, or sorry, 4-2 uh, points ratio on that first half on Oregon. But Auburn brought it all the way up to six, and then Texas was able to, again, bring themselves back up again after losing so many in a row. I think it was, I think if you, if I remember correctly, you said it was four in a row that Auburn pulled together on their defensive side before uh, San Antonio had any sort of answer for them. So, again, it just comes down to we just need to watch it play out because at this point, anything is possible. Yeah, on Oregon, Auburn, the first four rounds of their defensive half, they put together in a row. Now it was this last round, the first of the four that they're going to put together. Could they bring these maps and this matchup to a complete time? It's doable. We've seen them put four rounds together before. 
but like you said, they have not a single round to breathe. If they even make one little slip up, it could cost them the round and then the game. And already not off to a great start. Tongue being super aggressive on this bathroom window is going to find Peep. Almost gets his head blown off through this wall, but fortunately isn't playing overly aggressive. Just super aggressive, not overly aggressive. There's a, there's a very <laughs> fine line between those two. But he's going to be holding bathroom regardless. He's going to keep trying to apply the pressure onto Auburn. And that's exactly what he's going to be doing. Is he finds a headshot onto Dynamite, but not before Keys finds one. And Digital finally takes Ton off the board. Good on Auburn to keep the man count even. They didn't get the opening pick, but they're keeping the man count to this even 3-3. Three, three. But what is this madman doing? Mute just charges into bathroom. BC finds IC, but he's quick with the refrag. Oh my goodness. I, I, mm, I don't know. BC really should not have gotten a pick off of that. He just blindly charged into bathroom. Maybe there was some sort of intel that he could have used, but there's no intel ops from the defense. So maybe some sound from the cameras. Minute 25 left. Four drones four keys in digital to use they're definitely on them using them nice little pre-fire quick peek coming out from keys but nothing quite gonna come from it as digital's pushing through astro now the yeah, danger oh, here we go oh my god it's going back and forth these guys just frag once here oh. once there and it looks like san antonio bring it back as digital and keys both end their plot lines in this story and that is gg as san antonio mops up the rest of this game and the, now the match is theirs. I, I wanted Auburn to bring it back. I wanted it so bad. <laughs> you know, it would have been it would have been a poetic ending, that is for sure. But unfortunately, just like life, Rainbow Six is a fickle game, and unfortunately, the gods of six say nay to Auburn today. Yep. Better luck that next is week. My... Texas right just really bringing it together completely and utterly kind of looking a little bit shaky on map one losing that 4-2 lead but in the end tying it up and then on to villa looking actually quite confident in the first half 5-1 lead and then keeping it together we will be getting i believe ton in here for the interview the frag lord himself but again keys had some good support some really nice picks coming out and on the other side of auburn too uh keys yeah keys on was the opposite side there i don't know what i'm talking about um just the clash of titans really but in the end san antonio just had the support that auburn didn't auburn almost looked to get kind of burnt out towards the end um after oregon after they lost that two round lead when they were on match point they just didn't really look the same a couple of rounds looked really clean but they never got some rounds together to keep any sort of momentum going and it's unfortunate um, siege is quite the momentum based game there's it's so much to do with the mentality of it and auburn just didn't quite have it whereas in texas they just brought map one back and kept it going we will be going for a quick ad break as we get ton in here so definitely don't go anywhere we'll be right back for the interview Listen closely to what's left. The Void. A place where sound is never just noise. It's a competitive edge. A weapon in your arsenal. It's something you can never touch, but you can always feel. And this isn't like anything you've ever felt before. Uh, okay all right welcome back with us now we have ton the frag lord himself from san antonio ton how are you feeling after that matchup uh a lot better after the second map um honestly first map is a warm-up i swear um we were just you know feeling it out feeling out what they could do and then second map we just decided to go out 
Yeah, I know. For the first half of the first map, you guys ended up with a 4-2 lead. Nothing crazy. But then Auburn brought it back four rounds in a mm -hmm. row. What was your mentality going into those last couple rounds? And what led you to win those last couple and to tie it up? Uh, for me, I honestly think it was the switch from Ash to Jackal. I just wasn't feeling Ash on that map. And also, like, when they went basement, we tried pushing blue, which, like, we it wasn't a good idea, and we switched that up. We started pushing main and freezer, and that worked more consistently. So we won those basement rounds on attack. We just we just really cleaned up our attack, I think, in those last few rounds. We, we wanted that tie. <laughs> yeah, definitely. You could definitely tell. Once you guys started pushing main and freezer – it's a nice split presence, and you guys definitely took site control quite effectively. Now, next question. What were comms like when Easy Money came up red stairs on that Villa flank? I think that was <laughs> round eight on Villa. We, we were actually – he was getting tracked like three times in a row, I think, and he we ran all the way that. up. He ran all the way from Astro all the way down to the basement, and just he was living there. Like <laughs> That became his home for a little bit. And, I guess I guess the opposing team decided it wasn't worth their time to take him out, and that that bit him in the ass real hard. Yeah, <laughs> oh, so oh, I got a wrong. question for you. So, Tun, yes, put sir. us inside the huddle, if you will. Auburn comes back with four rounds on their defense. It's they've got six. You guys are down at four. What was said between your team to bring it back the way you guys did? Because it wasn't no just roll of the dice or skim by the teeth. You guys came in with confidence. You guys came in with everything. I made it look easy those last two rounds on Oregon and continued that momentum. So what was said between you guys in on your headsets there that really brought you guys back together? Oh, I mean, I remember specifically myself saying – like, look, it's two rounds. It's this or nothing. If we lose this, then, like, the point differential is not going to be very good. <laughs> it's for it's the points. <laughs> we just... Yeah, and I, we, we were both looking at it, and we could not believe it. We, we were both putting it as Auburn was going to take the map. And then it was almost like you guys put on the, uh, the afterburners, if you will, and <laughs> ran through them on their defense, which I, I even say that. I, I felt like it, it felt weak. They were making mistakes. They were overconfident, like as if they were at the end of the race and expecting to win, and that was going to be the end of it. And you guys really turned that around on them. On the second map with Villa, again, continuing that momentum forward. However, throughout these two maps, I have to say, you and Keys seem to have been fragging and counter-fragging each other on every other round. Was that kind of your assignment to try and take out their top frags between you and Breeze or uh, BZ? Um, uh, we definitely were not assigned specifically to kill like specific people as much as just, you know, we, I don't know, frankly, I don't think we discriminate against who we're shooting at. I think we just shoot them. That's fair. Very good. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> that's fair. All right. Uh, one more, one more question for me anyways, Ton. Do you know who Swagger Souls is? Yes. Does this man sound like Swagger Souls? Yes. Thank you. No, no further <laughs> questions, Your Honor. No problem. Uh, I you got any that. more speeds? No, honestly, I don't got anything else um, off yeah. the top of my head. I just have to say congratulations on the second map win, and well done with the skill for you and your team to even pull back the all or nothing plays that you did on that first map. I, I applaud both teams, but you yeah. and your team specifically a well-deserved round of applause by the audience and ourselves here at CEA. I can't clap and hold my push to talk, but I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it guys. Yeah, man. GG's. Uh, I'd just like to thank everyone who decided to stick through the end here. Thank you all for catching the stream tonight. It was some incredible games. Uh, yeah, we and will... as always, uh, I, I've been the one true spades. And I've been blue card, and we've been sponsored by Corsair. If you ever need some nice peripherals, some really, I love those guys. They're really helping us get through this. What's new.gg, get some nice CEA merchandise, sweatpants, hoods, hats, whatever you need. And of course, Rogue Energy. Use code CEA Siege at checkout to get 10% off any energy powders, energy drink mixers, all of the G fuel you need.
Thank you very much for joining us. Don't forget to catch the invite game we have tomorrow night. And until next time, we'll see you later.